to class two. So this is the beginners level class on creating Cricut style cutwork cards. So you'll notice I have a scoreboard here. This could be a paper trimmer. Uh, it could be um, any type of scoreboard that has at least one groove. And we're just going to use that for creating our own card lengths. If you have some that are already pre-folded or pre-scored rather, then you can use those. So let's pull out a piece of card. Okay, now the good news is with this particular style, the card that we use doesn't have to be really super duper thick because we're going to be backing it with a contrasting card. So, I have my piece of card so that it's A5 size, that's 210 or 21 centimeters wide, and then 148.5 mil or 14.85 centimeters tall. Now, the joy of what I'm going to be teaching you is that it doesn't matter whether your card is exactly that size or not. All that's important is that we manage to score it in the right place so that it's going to be very roughly in the middle. So in this case, we're going to go for 105. I'm going to use my phone folder. Now you could also use your scoring tool if you wish. And once you have a nice clear score line, we're going to set our scoreboard to one side. So, from here, don't be tempted to fold your card yet. <laughs> Unless you're not sure that it's in the middle so that you know which is the front. Okay, so, very quickly. I'm going to show you how not to do it. So, if you fold it and your card is exactly overlapping, then what you can find is sometimes a bit hard to tell which is the front. So in your scoreboard, you can kind of offset it very fractionally, one direction or the other, and the longer edge is your front, okay? So if you just kind of rest your finger on there, you can kind of tell which side is bow more to know which is the front. So I would say in this case that this back bit is actually my front of my card. Now the reason I say don't fold it is now we have a tendency to have a flappy bird which isn't what we want when we want to stick it down to our mat so just give that a, a press back down. We're going to put our washi tape along our score line the same way as what we did on our mat so that our score line of our card goes down the right hand edge of our washi. Now what I will say is, at this point, don't press down too hard on this washi if you can help it. Okay, so let's get my handy little pencil sander. You can multitask, honest. <laughs> there we go. So we have our card with our washi. If you are concerned that your card that you're using is particularly flimsy or um, is particularly fibrous on top or if it's a glossy card then just detack this washi tape first before placing it onto a card. So the idea behind the washi tape is if I just fold this very quickly is that it clearly shows where that fold line is. So I want that to be right up to that edge. And then that means that we know that everything past that point is on the front of our card. Now we're going to get our cutting mat that we prepared earlier. We're going to line up our washi tape to the guide, like so, and also across the top. So you should have something that looks like this. Look at that for a pattern match. If I wanted to do that, no chance. 
<laughs> okay. So, what we want to do now is we're going to do a background scan. So, check that your um, machine is clear behind before you do this. Because otherwise, when you feed it through, it's going to be pushing stuff off your desk. Now, we'll wait and see whether that happens to me today. Because you know what it's like. I end up filming and suddenly finding that somebody has left something behind my machine. So, let's swap to... When we want to do a um, background scan, we must have something on our mat. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what you put on, but let's uh, start ourselves with a bit of a guide. So I'm going to go to pattern, basic shapes. I'm going to go to a rectangle. Now, A6 is what we've essentially folded our card down to. So that is 105 by 148.5. So, I need to take that up to 148. Hmm. Okay. Now, we've got 148 here. I'm just going to knock that up one notch to get that to 105 and we do that by ticking our little ratio button here we're going to set that onto our mat i'm going to ignore the, uh, at this point that we've kind of got it around the wrong way so if we go to edit object edit get the right button always good and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so that that's ready to line up now we could put that roughly where we're expecting our card to go, so we know one inch in. And if you're struggling to line up, we can use our arrow keys. Like so. There we go. So we're on the six inch line on that left hand edge. The one inch line at the top and everything else just kind of just follows. Okay, now this is where you're going to see that there is a slight mismatch between where it scans and where, where it is on the actual mat. So, what I will say is don't get hung up too much if it's not smack on that centre point. You are better off trusting your alignment on your machine in terms of checking against the actual grid than you are against the scan in some senses <coughs> <coughs> now all machines are different for this so if you need like a really super duper accurate alignment then it is worth spending a little bit of time with some squared paper and just checking your alignment from your scan to your cut okay so i'm gonna go okay and we have this icon here, which looks like a sheet of paper on a mat going through a scan bar type thing. And that's the one we need for this. We can type to start. And it's going to feed all the way through, even if your active area isn't the full 12 by 12 mat. Just something to bear in mind. Okay. 
So we have our tape clearly showing the area that we're working within. We can see that our square is very slightly off, but I'm willing to go with that. <laughs> okay. Now, the only thing you can't do on your machine is lock that square, unfortunately, which would be ideal, but it's just not possible at this time. So, I'm going to go to Add Pattern, and now we need to make some decisions in terms of the design itself. So, we have lots of different types of designs on our machine and quite often you'll see me sticking to the design section and the basic shapes so i thought this would be a really good opportunity to actually do something a little different and we're going to be using the stencil designs so that is these ones here and if we tap on the icon you can see that we can choose from stencil text stencil designs stencil borders Okay, now there's no right answer here, but as we're, you know, sticking for a beginner's attempt at this, let's go for something that is quite simple, bold, and isn't going to hurt being that bit smaller, because when stencils are designed, typically they think that you're going to cut them out of a full 12 by 12 miler, not a 6 by 4 card. So... You want to kind of be mindful about which designs you are choosing. And go for something that isn't too intricate. Certainly to get you started anyway. So we have some corners. We have um, a frame that we can use. Now what I would say with that frame is there's a lot of cut area in that. So save that till. The next class, when we're looking at being able to work with designs in Canvas a little bit more. <coughs> uh, I'm just going to go for this one. So, STB008. I'm going to add that to my mat. And you're going to see that, that comes in at 93 by 100. Okay. Again fantastic it's a little bit big we're gonna have to take that down because we want to have a clear amount around the edge of our card so our insert is going to sit inside of our card front so your design needs to sit inside of that again so if we go down to about 90 wide that should give us enough room for manoeuvre. And we're going to add that to our mat. It is automatically going to come in in that top left corner because we've, you know, we've not got anything else in that corner. We're going to tap on it. We're going to drag it. And we're going to position it. Now, if at this point you get it onto your card and you think, oh, I'm still not happy with the size of that, we can go to Object, Edit, Resize, and just tweak it down a little bit more. It's going to resize from that centre point. So I'm going to take it down to about there. Okay. And let's go OK. OK again. And we can use our arrow keys. So far, so good. I'm going to go OK, select, select all, and select all is going to select both the card front that we did that with our rectangle and also our design. We can then go to move, align, <coughs> center and center. So we now know that that is in the centre of our card front. Okay. We can tap off that so that just one item is selected.
So at this point, if we want to add some text, we can do. We're going to go back to that stencil, to our stencil font, and we can choose our text. Now, what I would say is if you're going to be doing this a lot, then kind of have a document already set up with all your letters in, and it'd be quicker to do it that way and start from there than it will be to do it this way. Now, at the moment, these letters are huge. We only need them to be about two centimeters big, so 20 mil tall. I'm going to set that onto my mat. I'm going to get add pattern stands for text. Oh, and we're going to do the same again. So that we get to 20. Set add pattern stencil text B and we're going to go down to 20 again. It's one of those occasions where you wish you just had another pattern because it would just be easy. Add then pattern then stencil. Add the, and again, down to 20. Now, there's a reason why I'm making sure I get this text all the same size at this point. Now, when I then add that onto the mat, because I've not moved anything, it's been going across that top line. And it, you probably can't see it at the moment because of that washi tape. That's okay. We have a way of seeing that. So if I turn my washi tape background off, we can see that it's in that top left corner. I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to go to Multi-Select. We're going to use our Window Select. We're going to take this bottom arrow and we're going to slide it up so that it just goes around our text. We're going to go OK. So we've got all of our text selected. We're going to go OK again, go to Move, Align, we're going to center it so that it all looks like it's supposed to be all that same size. We'll go OK, OK. Now your pattern um, interval dictates the space between those letters. So if you need a little bit more space, you can change your pattern interval before you do that step. But for this, we should be okay because there's nothing that should really line up with each other. Okay, so then we're going to go to Object Edit and we're going to Group. So that locks all that text into one word and we can bring that across and we can decide where we're going to put it at the top, at the bottom, I think I'm going to put it at the top. I can go OK. We could cycle through our designs using our two arrow keys. And I'm just going to move that design just down. By doing it with the um, cursor keys, rather than trying to do it physically by dragging it, we're making sure that we stay in that centre aligned position. And our love looks like it lines up correctly. I'm just going to move it down just a touch though because we need to add it in one more thing. So I'm going to go OK at this point. And we need to add in our corners. Now, if we go to our designs, and let's see where we can find it. So. I'm going to go down to find a corner design. Now we could use one of these and take it into canvas and get rid of that outside line. So that's just one way that we can do it. <coughs> um, just trying to find the other way, which is, there is somewhere hiding. 
a little photo insert and you know you when you've seen it and it's like I know it's here somewhere so let's try this one so here we go you've got this one here now what I will say is this looks huge for a very little insert in the middle okay so what I will show you is how we can actually take that apart in canvas but I'm just going to add that onto my mat as is now it's going to throw a hissy fit because it can't fit on the mat without overlapping something else so let's go back just shrink it down we can always sort that out let's try again and see if it'll add there we go so we have this design here if we're going to edit object edit you can see that at the moment although we know it's a group shape one group is grayed out so we can't do it that doesn't mean to say that it's not impossible so we're going to offset it and you just want to do it by the least amount possible okay so now we have this shape here but because we've done the offset it's had to group what it's done for the offset we can ungroup it and we just want to get to that box so let's go through our shapes with our arrow key we don't need that top one anymore because that was our original that can go we don't need this outer box anymore so that can go and we just need these four little corner points now what I would say is um, if these are in the right format for you um, then great you can just group them and move them so we could go okay let's move that there okay okay object edit and group um, can move that there so we can see that for my card this is a little bit small but we can go resize and it's going to resize it as a group but you don't want to go so big that it's too close to this edge so what I would say is rather than trying to stretch it which is going to make your corner bits bigger Let's just move that out of the way for a minute. I'm going to ungroup these. Okay. And we can actually then work with them in lines rather than trying to get it to, to resize. So, what do I mean? Multi select. If we go, okay, let's get a window. And I just want those two there selected. Okay. We're going to go OK. And we're going to go to move. And we're going to space that out. So that we get a bit more width in there. We're going to go OK. And I go to more to select and tap off. And that means that we select nothing. I'm going to go to the window select and just because we're running out of room a little bit let's just select those four points just going to group them for a moment move them over here because now we need to give ourselves a little bit more height so if we offer it up over here we can see that those corner points are now at the correct width but we need to go up so that that top one is about an inch higher okay so I'm going to pop that there and group it window select again and we're going to take those top two okay nudge upwards so about there you don't want to go all the way to the top and bottom because you don't want to get too big okay multi select window and then we've got our four points selected 
object group off of at the top. That's not bad. Now we want to make sure that that is in the middle. Don't worry about the fact that your love is overlapping its point. Just concentrate on those corners. So about there. Okay. I'm going to cycle through and I'm just going to resize that design a little bit just to take it in. There we go. So that's going to do it from that middle point so we know it's still central. Now, if you're struggling to get to your text, we can use our arrow keys to help us get to it. We can resize it slightly. Okay. And we can move it down. Like so. Go okay. And I'm just going to tap off that so I can kind of check that everything is going to cut out without touching. So particularly check your corners here that aren't colliding with anything else that's cutting out because otherwise putting your insert in isn't going to work check that you're happy with your um alignment between your design and your text that nothing again is touching there and hopefully fingers crossed we should be good to go now remember how i was saying that stencil designs are meant to be bigger I'm just looking at this and I'm thinking, this is pretty close. So when we come to removing our card blank, we want to go really careful when we get to those sections there. Likewise, we don't want to be burnishing our card down on our mat in those spaces because, again, we're going to make our life more difficult. So let's see how we go. I'm going to go, OK. 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 And you have a choice here, and there is no right answer. If you have the vinyl auto blade for the SDX, then use that vinyl auto blade for the SDX. If you don't, use a standard blade. Again, fine, not, you know, it's no biggie. The more complicated the design is, the better the result will be with the vinyl blade as opposed to the standard blade. Um, on the CM machine, just use your standard um, manual blade, your blue one, and you'll be fine. So I'm just going to pop that in. I'm going to go OK. Please select. I want it to cut. Uh, pressure minus six. Might just pop that up a notch. Speed one. Oh, one thing before I go. Nearly. You want to make sure that you get rid of that out uh, rectangle. Because while we've used it for alignment, we don't want to be cutting it. And we can save our design as well. So if you want to save it to your machine. Don't think about it. It's probably going to tell me there's no room. Ah, oh, there we go. So, okay. And then we can go and cut that out. Now, hopefully, it's remembered our set and it changes the settings. So we can just type to go.
you. So, card is underneath here. We're going to put down our cutting mat so that we see in the back of it. We're going to gently peel up one edge and we're going to use a metal spatula very, very carefully to tease this off as carefully as we can. And I said you do want to go careful so that we are not losing any shapes that need to stay in. If there's any resistance, don't try and fight it. Just flick it up, see what might be causing an issue. So in this case, we've got tiny gap here in this flower. So I'm just going to very carefully get my metal spatula in there. And you want to go careful at all the joins because you can see how fine some of these are. And we're just going to give it a sideways wiggle. And slowly does it. Good news is once you've kind of done the the awkward bits, the rest should be relatively simple. And we'll just pop off. So easy does it, especially around the centre of these flowers. The other little bits here that stayed in, don't worry about those at this point. It's all about getting this card front off the mat in one piece. So, see how this flower is just sticking just there. Just going to very carefully get my metal spatula in underneath a little bit of encouragement and it should come up nicely and we shouldn't be far off now because most of this has been off the map let's just use that top corner and there we go so you should have something now that looks like this Okay, and if we fold it, you can see it's very slightly off, but it'll do. Now, with your bits on your mat, if you've got lots of little pieces, then do use your lint roller to get these off, but as any type of scraper will do, and we can just kind of fling those off. <laughs> You'll be finding little bits of card everywhere for days when you create these types of cards because they do tend to ping like tiddlywinks. It's one of those ones where, you know, an anti-static cloth might actually help before we actually stick our card to the mat. There's not many times when I'll say to use that with your machine, but... And we're just going to just scrape those away. Now, as we've saved that design, we can actually kind of save our photo corners as a separate element as well. So if you want to use those again, you can do. And for beginners, that is probably the easiest way that you can create this style of card and still have some control over the design. So if we move all those bits to one side. Now, last bit of the puzzle. So we've got our card here and now we need to pick a 
Here's a card that is going to contrast. So I'm going to go for this nice kind of summery cream. So it's not quite cream, but it's not quite yellow. Okay, and the colours are coming across really odd on this today, actually. So this is actually a lilac. So in terms of um, your your machine, it's closer to that colour than it is actually the colour you're seeing on the screen, which is weird. But now we need to kind of measure our, our card and we want to put our insert in. So let's grab a ruler. Mm, can be any ruler. So we could use a magnetic one if you have one. Um, if all you've got is a plastic ruler, use a plastic ruler. And we're going to measure from corner to corner. So we have, if we go slightly inside, it's going to fit nicer. So, so 86 wide. Hundred and twenty four tall. So now we need a trimmer of some I'm going to use my guillotine just for ease. So I want eighty six wide. You know those moments where you look at it and you think, that doesn't look wide enough. So let's just double check. And we can always check against our trimmer as well. That we're happy that it's accurate. It is probably an optical illusion, but... Measure twice, cut once, and 124 on this edge here. Okay, so you should now have a square of card. Let's just take any bits out of your card that are still stuck in. I think that's fine. We're going to slide in. card into our corners like so if you want to pop a little bit of glue on when you do that step you can do but it's really not necessary and there we go we have our Cricut cut design or oh, Cricut style I should say so at the moment you can see that these corners are sticking out um, just because of how that design is in your machine but we can actually get so much more in depth with corners so in lesson two what we're going to be looking at is taking this design a step further and actually looking at positioning in canvas so that we have our corners a little bit better positioned but also that we're going to have a little bit less of this kind of blockiness in these corners pieces as well so that they're kind of going to tuck back in. So there we go. Not bad. Thank you for joining me. And the next class will be exclusive to Patreon. And that will be ad free for our supporters and above. Take care. And bye. Thank you.